Pennsylvania Park right now, and the reason that we're here is because we want to urge Bernie Sanders to go to Gaza. This is a really imperative because people in Gaza have been marching, they've been demonstrating non-violently, and the Israeli forces have been sniping children, journalists, and unarmed protesters. And so this is a long 70 years of occupation. It's not just in the current moment. In Gaza right now, there's two million people living under siege since 2006, and they have, they've had enough. And so we're standing here in solidarity with people in Palestine, particularly in Gaza in this moment. And we want Bernie to go to Gaza to see the conditions for himself and bring awareness because I don't think a lot of people in the U.S. know. And if they do know what's happening, it's kind of through this filter that's um, been put on by the mainstream media and our books that favors Israel. And so we want people to know the truth about the Israeli occupation and stand on the side of Palestinians. Thank you. Thank you. And I come back. Is this the same one that was emailed around? Yeah. Can I do both? Yeah. Absolutely, justice for Palestine. Yeah. Hey, we got to be paying attention to what's going on in Gaza, what's going on in Palestine, because our government is paying for it. Our taxes are going there. So, justice for Palestine. Piney Park this evening to encourage our Senator Bernie San Sanders to go to Gaza and observe what's going on. Many uh, Gazan people, Palestinian people, are being shot and some killed uh, at the border with uh, with uh, with by Israeli troops. So we're encouraging him to go there and observe the situation. And uh, we don't think it's right that unarmed protesters should be uh, shot down. Many have been killed, others wounded, uh, for protesting on behalf of uh, uh, Palestinian rights. So that's why I'm here, and that's why we're here as a group. Stuff goes. I think we just I know you're sending letters to get Bernie to go to Gaza if you don't want to sign it real quick. Uh, we're here today um, to persuade Bernie Sanders to go to Gaza at this moment and since March 30th. Um, Violence against the Palestinians has 
escalated to a very critical point where um, at this this was as of yesterday uh, 51 Palestinians have been killed over 6400 have been injured and 2,000 of those injuries have been um, by live ammunition and this is a non-violent demonstration by the Palestinians um, to return to their home they are the indigenous people of this land and since um, 1948 they have been um, fighting to return to their land. In 1948 on May 15th, uh, over 750,000 Palestinians were expelled from their homes. Um, they were forcefully kicked out and um, placed in, in refugee camps and around and in Gaza and throughout the West Bank. Um, I am Jewish and I feel like it's important that I, I stand in solidarity with the Palestinians and, um, and recognize and state very clearly that this is not my homeland and it is, um, it is the right of Palestinians to return to their home, and they um, have the right to demonstrate nonviolently without a violent response. And this is why we're urging Bernie Sanders to go to Gaza at this moment. The number one myth that, that Westerners have about this conflict is that Arabs and Jews have been fighting for thousands of years and they're going to continue to fight. This is really quite bizarre because all it only takes is a little bit of reading of history to find out that this just isn't true. There is no congenital historical enmity between the Arabs and the Jews. The Jews flourished in the Arab world at a time when they were being persecuted throughout all of Europe. At the end of the 19th century, because of anti-Semitism in Europe, European Jews began to try and figure out a solution to the Jewish problem. A very small minority adhered to Zionism, the idea that the only place in which they could be safe is within the Jewish state. Zionist Jews um, actually had a, a design on uh, the land of Palestine, the idea of creating a homeland for Jews in the land of Palestine. And this uh, is really the beginning of the conflict. The mainstream Israeli Jewish society believed, because that's the way they had been educated, that Palestine was empty, had been empty when the Jewish settlers came there. Who paid the price when they settled there? Is it really true that Israel was a land without a people for a people without a land? 
Palestine was not empty. It was a land populated by Arabs who had a high level of culture, high level of education. With farms and markets and towns and villages and roads and commerce and lots of interaction with the rest of the world. The population was overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly Arab. Jewish immigration increased under British rule following World War I, when Britain implemented the Balfour Declaration, promising a Jewish homeland in Palestine. This measure conflicted with Britain's previous promise of self-rule for Arab inhabitants throughout the region. Britain was basically extremely supportive of the Zionist movement. It helped to establish all of the structures of a state. At the same time, the Arabs of Palestine were denied the right of self-determination. The Palestinians saw a European power decide the future of a non-European territory in flat disregard of both their presence and wishes. In the 1920s, as land was being stripped away from local residents, the first clashes between Palestinians and Jews began and would continue on for years to come. Until the early 1930s, the Jewish population of Palestine remained under 17%. Hitler's rise to power in Germany completely changed that. In just five years, 174,000 Jews flooded into Palestine, doubling their population. As the world attempted to make amends for the horrors of Nazi genocidal policies, efforts to make Palestine a Jewish homeland increased. The Palestinians, they were not the Nazis. They were not responsible for the Holocaust. But they were the ones who paid the price. In 1947, with the conflict spiraling out of control, Britain decided to turn the problem of Palestine over to the United Nations. The UN, under pressure, proposed to divide the land into two states an Arab state and a Jewish state. Arabs were to be given 43% of the land, despite the fact that they made up more than two-thirds of the population and owned over 92% of the land. Jews were to be given 56%, although they comprised only one-third of the population and owned less than 8% of the total area. Nevertheless, they were given not only most of the land, they were given the most fertile land. Zionist leaders took advantage of their superior military preparation and immediately began occupying major Arab cities in Palestine. I was among the people that conquered Akov. When we were walking around, we entered the flat. There was a pair of shoes of a small child, maybe two years old. They didn't have time to put on the shoes, so they left the shoes and they ran away. They left everything. We found out that there was a systematic expulsion of Palestinians, and there was, as I said, there was an ethnic cleansing operation taking place. The most infamous campaign was the massacre at the village of Deir Yassin, where over 100 men, women, and children were systematically murdered.
اللي بطير انت كويس هات المصاري بغات يسوي كوتشي الحنو يسوي شويه كوتشي الحنو حاجه هاك يا ويلي هي زيدتك على السلام راكي حبيب هذا راكي نعود حط لك الفلوس زين ما يكون راسي في وسك الدم حط لك خمس طلاق ولا انت في راسك The ruthlessness of the attack on Deir Yassin drove fear and panic into the Palestinian population and led to the flight of unarmed civilians from their homes all over the country. As a result, maybe 300 or so thousand Palestinians had already been expelled before the first Arab soldier entered Palestine. Some of the neighboring Arab armies finally intervened after May 15, 1948, when Israel officially announced its statehood. Although there was a lot of war rhetoric on the Arab side, very few soldiers, Arab soldiers, were sent into the battlefield. And actually, for most parts of the war, there was a superiority on the side of the Israeli army. The Israeli army cleansed much of the territory and took over a large part of the designated Palestinian state. The new state of Israel encompassed 78% of the total land of Palestine. The West Bank came under Jordanian control and the Gaza Strip under Egyptian dominion. Although a truce was declared between Israel and the Arab states, true peace remained elusive as over 700,000 Palestinian refugees languished in nearby camps, often in sight of homes to which they still held the deeds and a deep desire to return. Most of the deserted and evicted Palestinian uh, villages were erased from upon the earth and were either turned into Jewish settlements or into a fertile uh, land. Of the 500 Palestinian villages in what became in Israel in 1948, 400 were destroyed. These efforts to destroy the possibility of their returning home were countered by the United Nations, which continues to affirm their human right enshrined in international law and morality to return. A Palestinian who had lost her land or lost his land uh, as the result of the, the creation of Israel in 1948 cannot come back even for a visit. I can go back to Israel as if I were returning and claim immediate citizenship, having no historic tie, speaking no Hebrew, knowing no one in the country, having no family who ever was there. All that one needs is being Jewish, a religious group like any other. <laughs> 